Okay, let's do indirect truth tables now. And um, so sometimes you might have five letters, that's 32 rows, or six letters, that's 64 rows, right? Or seven letters, 128 rows. And you don't want to make a truth table that long. So this is a shortcut um, so that you only maybe have to draw one or two or three lines instead of 64 or 128. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume for step one, the argument is invalid. And so we're going to assume the conclusion is false and the premises are true. And if that assumption leads to a contradiction, then the argument is not invalid. That is, we can't assume that it's invalid. And so um, it's valid. But if it doesn't lead to a contradiction, then the argument is valid because we can consistently make the conclusion false and the premises true. So you want to come back and talk through it over and over again and you really have to understand chapter one what validity is. So let's practice here. Um, I'm going to pull up first let's do some preliminary skills like in your book. And the point here is that if you know the value of the main operator, you can figure out the value of the parts. If you know the value of the whole, you can figure out the value of the parts in many cases. So look at number one, A and B. If we know that that is true, then we can infer that A is true and B is true. Because a, because a conjunct is only true when both, um, you know, the and is only true when both conjuncts are true. So we can figure that one out. Now look at number two, if A then B. That whole statement is false, and remember there's only one case in which it's false, if you remember the horseshoe truth table, and that's when A is true and B is false. So based on the value of the whole, we can infer the value of the parts. Look at this one, A or B, and we know A is false, and A or B is true. So B must be true, because if B is false, this thing would be false. Let's look at the next one, S if and only if A. Now we know that um, this biconditional is true, and remember if it's true, that means S is true and A is true, or S is false and A is false. So based on the value of the whole, we simply cannot determine the value of the parts. We don't know if S is true or false or if A is true or false. So this one is undetermined. Let's look at a similar one though. If we have the biconditional again and we know E is true, then P must be true. Oh, I'm sorry, P must be false. There we go. We'll put make it false there. <laughs> okay. Um, so P must be false because if the whole thing is false and we know the value of uh, one part, you just got to look back at the biconditional truth table. Right? So E being true, P must be false because if P is true, this whole thing would be true. So when you know the truth value of the whole, you can often infer the truth value of the parts. Okay. So let's go now and use the indirect truth table method to test the validity of these arguments. Remember, step one is to assume the conclusion is false and the premises are true. So we write false, okay, right here. I'm going to circle it. And then the premises are true. So the main operator of this premise is true. If you're lost right now, look at my previous videos. This, these are all, there's a lot of prerequis prerequisite knowledge that you would want to get. Okay, we've done the first step. We assume the conclusion is false and the premises are true. Now let's see what we can infer from this assumption. All right. So if not A is false, that means A is true. And if A is true over here, A, we want to assign the same truth value to the letters throughout. Okay. Notice I'm not just arbitrarily assigning values. Rather, I'm logically inferring from the assumption that the conclusion is false that A must be true, and so A is true over here. So look at this horseshoe. If we know the horseshoe is true, and the antecedent is true, A, then the consequent, uh, C, must be true, because if it was false, it would make this false. So now we know that C is true, but we have a problem. Um, I, um, and uh, the problem is, is that it says not C is uh, true, but C here, so C must be false, so we have a contradiction because C is false and not C is, uh, I'm sorry, C is false and C is true at the same time. So when we infer that the conclusion is false and the premises are true, it leads to a contradiction. So when we assume the argument is invalid, it leads to a contradiction. Therefore, the argument is not invalid. So number one, using the truth table method, is valid.
the indirect truth table. And if you don't believe me, just do all four rows in the normal truth table, and you'll find a row with these true values. Um, um, well, you'll find that it's not invalid. You won't find a true premise and false conclusion row. Okay, let's do the next one. <laughs> okay, um, if a then not e. All right. So we want to make that false. Remember, we're assuming the conclusion is false. Okay. So we assume the conclusion is false. I'm going to circle it so I can keep track of that. This one has three premises. So the first, the third premise, I'm sorry, is true. So not b is true. And we want to assume the second premise is true. And of course, the first premise is true. And you have to know main operators and all that, uh, which is in previous videos. So there we go. I've done step one. I assume the conclusion is false and the premises are true. Uh, that is, I have assumed the argument is invalid. OK. Now let's look at the conclusion and see if we can infer anything starting there. Um, and by the way, we could start with a premise. So for example, not b is true. We know b is false, right? You can start wherever you want. And there are shortcuts I won't go through here. But OK, so let's go back to the conclusion. Um, oh, by the way, if b is false, we might as well fill it in before we go further. OK, so b is false over here, too. OK, so if this uh, horseshoe is false, then we know a must be true. Because the only time a horseshoe is false is if we have a true a and a false antecedent. So not E must be false, so E must be true. Let's plug in what we discovered here. So A is true. We're going to go over here. A is true. And there's no more A's. So then we look at E. E is true. I'm going to plug that in. E is true. Okay. All right. So I'm assigning letters. <coughs> now, let's go to the second premise. If C, then D and E. And um, I, I don't seem to be able to infer much here, because if this is true, C could be false or true, right? Um, and then this, uh, I just can't infer anything here that I see. So let's go to the first premise. And it says um, that this horseshoe is true and the antecedent is true. OK, so that means the consequent B or C must be true. But we know B is false. So we know that B or C must be true, and B is false. And the reason this B or C must be true is because we have a true antecedent, and the horseshoe is true. And the only way the horseshoe can be true with a true antecedent is if the consequent is true. So we have false or C. That must be true, because the only way a wedge can be true is if one of them is true, and we already know it's true. So now we know C is true. And I put it in over here. But if C is true here in the second premise, then the consequent must be true. So the and there must be true. But the only way for the and to be true is if the D is true as well as the E. So we assign D. OK, so I'm done. I now know that this argument is invalid. So we would write invalid. And you might say, well, what's going on? How do you know that? Um, and the reason is is because when I assume the conclusion was false and the premises were true, right? I assume that, and then using um, logic, you know, inferences, I consistently assign every letter a, a value. And so, um, in other words, I, there is a letter um, of truth value assignment to A, B, C, D, and E such that you can make the premises true and the conclusion false, so this argument's invalid. And if you don't trust me, make a truth table with A, B, C, D, and E. That's five rows. Uh, I'm sorry, that's five letters, so that's 32 rows. And you'll find one of the rows has these values for A, B, C, D, and E, in which you find true premises and a false conclusion. Okay. All right, wasn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do one more. And this one is more challenging. It's a big mess, isn't it? It's more challenging because I'm going to assume the conclusion is false, right? Just like before. Um, let's put two false. Oh my gosh, that's ugly. OK, that's supposed to be false. <laughs> okay, But if the biconditional is false, that means S could be true, or S and, and then um, T false. But there's a second way that s if and only if uh, t can be 
uh, false, and that's if S is false and T is true. So we're going to do the same thing we did in the other two problems, okay? But we're, oh my gosh, that's an awful line, okay? But we're going to have two rows, okay? And you might say, oh no, two rows, but it's still better than P, Q, R, S, T. It's still better than 32 rows, which is what you would have with these five letters, okay? So we have to see if uh, this part is valid first, all right? And um, if this row, by the way, if we can assign truth values on this row, then we know 